So our topic tonight is Jesus the Good Shepherd. And you know, I wonder if there's some things in the Bible that we don't get because we don't understand shepherds. You know, shepherds was a thing that they were all familiar with back then. But you know, I work in IT, I work with computers. And if the Bible verses were all about computers, I'm pretty sure that the people back then would have been lost in translation, you know. And I think that perhaps sometimes some of what the Bible says gets a bit lost in translation for us because we don't, we don't really have many shepherds anymore. We've got farmers on a mass scale and we know what sheep are, but still we understand what a shepherd used to do. So, throwing it over to our past the panel, Jesus the shepherd, who's going to launch us? Gary is okay, I'm going to launch you because, because the, the, Jesus was actually talked about by the prophets in the Old Testament and you can see on the screen there, with Matthew 2.6, the wise men come. And one of the things that, um, uh, that happened is that King Herod got really upset. And then he got, th- this passage was quoted uh, from the Old Testament. It says, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Israel. For out of you will come a ruler who will, who will shepherd my people Israel. And this is the, the prophecy talking about Jesus when he's just been born. You know, so, so shepherd, it was God's intention right from the beginning that Jesus would be the shepherd. Pass the ball. Yeah, the, the, the good shepherd is, uh, yeah, God really was clear about it in, uh, um, whenever Jesus was born. And uh, going along with that, um, when Jesus is talking about, uh, uh, he, he, he's, in, in the passage in John 10, verse 1, he says, Very truly, I tell you, Gary, I think uh, we'll, we'll bring it up shortly. And it says, Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. You see, the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. And the, gate ke- the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. And you see, I, it, it's, that, that really, really fascinates me. Because Jesus, Jesus calls us by name. He calls every single one of us by name. And you'll know his voice. And the easy way to identify his voice is that um, Jess preached a wonderful message last week about distinguishing voices. He, and, uh, and, and about that and around that, um, one of them was from what I picked up, a little bit of it, was when Peter heard from heaven and said, truly you are the Son of God, and he heard from heaven. And usually a great indicator when you can hear the shepherd's voice is that his power can come with it. And it's that warm feeling of the shepherd's voice. When he calls you by name, when he, when he calls you to want to, to honor him and, and to love him and, and, to, and to participate with the rest of his sheep, because it's heaps of fun. It's heaps of fun. Amen, you guys? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah and one, 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 oops. One, one of the things about this that's important for us to understand is that in the, in the Old Testament time, in the, in the time when Jesus was around, when he came, the shepherd knew the names of all his sheep. Yeah. It's not like we have nowadays. And he'd go out of the sheep pen and call them by name, and they would come out of the sheep pen where there was a whole lot of other shepherds, or maybe, you know, two or three or more other shepherds, with their sheep, and each shepherd could call their sheep by name, and only the sheep that belonged to that shepherd came out and followed. So that's a context. That's an important context. That passage. I actually have a really funny story. One time, at, <laughs> at, we we were at Orangeo, and Johanna has this sheep called Oreo, really fluffy, beautiful thing, right? Well, the sheep you know roams around at Orangeo. So, well, we well, it's getting late, so we went out to. So we went out, me, me and Bach, and I think Bella, to go look, look for the sheep, you know, the lost sheep, per se. And so we're calling out, Oreo, Oreo. You know, I'm calling out, trying to help Bach as well. And then sure enough, Bach sees Oreo in the distance. And I said, oh, cool, you know, watch this. You know, Oreo, Oreo, you know, nothing, no response. But as soon as Bach says, Oreo, I don't know. You know, <laughs> you know, you know. Well, whenever he says his name, sure enough, bop. He responds to Bach, and he doesn't respond to me, obviously, because that's why the sheep knew his shepherd, and that was Bach and Joe. He knew who, who, his, who his leader, his protector, his caregiver, the person who's going to look after him. He knew that voice, and he didn't respond to me. That's because you're too scary. 
It's because you got an American voice for it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, um, I, I really like this passage, eh? And it, it just goes to show you that Jesus does really take care of us, eh? He knows yeah. us by name. Mm. Um, you know, the, the one thing I always remember is that, um, that sheep, uh, sheep have no defense mechanism. They've got no way to um, defend themselves. They have no way to clean themselves. Mm. And so they really need a shepherd to, to really take care of them. Otherwise, they could die. Mm. Um, you know, if <coughs> their wool gets caught up in the, you know, in the, um, wherever, they might get stuck somewhere. The brambles. Yeah. yeah. And so they always need a, lead, uh, a, a shepherd to lead them and to, to guide them into green pastures. And when they get dirty, they need to be washed. When they, um, I guess, get sores and stuff like that, they need to be tended to. And, and that just shows us who Jesus is, eh? Yeah. And because he calls us sheep, right? Mm. And he, he uses um, sheep as, as a um, symbolic of us being um, people who have no way to defend ourselves and no way to take care of ourselves, no way to um, clean ourselves, eh? Mm. And so Jesus is our, is our shepherd, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he cleanses awesome. us. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, amen. Give, me, come here, give these guys a hand. There's another one that's really important, and one Peter... And 5 and verse 4, it says, When the chief shepherd appears, Jesus returning, and those, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. That's the power of the shepherd. The shepherd is the good shepherd, the ultimate shepherd, the one who really has come to rescue us. He, he doesn't leave us caught in the brambles. Yeah. You know, he is the one who goes out to search and find us. And you and I here, because... He did that because he is a shepherd who really, really, really cares. Yeah. So, you know, if, if, if you really want to uh, understand that, be, make sure you're actually listening to his voice. Mm. Because that's the point of the whole thing at the beginning. In Revelation 7, 17, it says, For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That's a great message for every one of us. That that's what God's doing for us. That Jesus is our shepherd who will take all the pain, all the dysfunction, all the wrong stuff that's happened to us, every bit of it out of our lives, he's going to wipe every tear away. Yeah. There's no uh, being bound up by the past. There's none of that stuff. We are set free. That's right. Amen. That's right. And, the, and, and so in John 10, 10, around that whole, I am the good shepherd, it says the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Yeah. That's the reality of it. And I was shocked that we had communion. No one knew what, what the topic was for today besides God. And, we, and, we, and Pat discussed how Jesus laid down his life. Yeah. And that's really what the shepherd does. He lays down his life for his sheep. Because he cares and he loves us. Awesome. And he wants us to know that. Yeah. Hey, you guys. Amen. That's amazing what God yeah. prepared today. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it was awesome. I, um, I remember at work when I did a, we did a farmhouse up in um, Paoranui. And the, the guy, he's a farmer and he keeps, um, he keeps cows. And, you know, he, he, and I asked him, I said, hey, bro, do you, you don't like sheep? And he, <laughs> and he, says, uh, he says, oh, sheep. You know, and he starts going on about sheep. And I said, um, I said, yeah, sheep are pretty stupid, eh? And he said, stupid's not the word. <laughs> because he says that sheep, they keep doing things. They keep, you know, ramming stuff and hurting themselves and getting themselves stuff. And, and uh, I reckon that's why Jesus calls us sheep. Because <laughs> we do stupid things. Or, you know, <laughs> well, I do anyway. <laughs> you know? and, and so you, you, see, you see the way, um, but the way that, even the way we are, God loves us, yeah. you know? He loves us that much to lay his life down for us, yeah. to, to save us. Um, that's the beautiful thing about it. Um, I noticed that right in the very first verse, it says, I t uh, very truly I tell you Pharisees. So he's speaking to religious leaders, and he talks about um, those who, who don't uh, come through the gate, but jump over the, um, jump over the, uh, the you know, the, the, the fence to get in, and, and they're, they're um, robbers and thieves. <laughs> And Jesus is telling them, he says, I am the real leader of God's people. And, and the, these leaders um, are pretty much false leaders because all they're doing is they're like, and he, and he talks about people being hired hands um, to, to shepherd the flock, you know, mm. a hired hand. And the hired hand doesn't care about the sheep. Mm. 
So when a wolf comes, they would run and they would leave the sheep to die. Yeah. Um, and that's what Jesus is um, pointing out as to um, religion, you know, like he says to the, the religious leaders saying, you guys aren't the real leaders, I'm the leader, mm. you know, I'm the leader. And, and these guys who, who are called by name, they will hear my voice. And, and the thing is that when God calls us, we know, we know his voice, eh? Yeah. We really do. We know his voice. And if we are his sheep, we can recognize his voice just like that. And it's yeah. awesome because he doesn't just call us and expect us to sort of figure it out, right? He gives us his spirit. Yeah. He, he places his spirit in us so that when he speaks, we know. Our spirits testify to the voice of our shepherd. Isn't that awesome, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. interesting you talk about how the shepherd lays down his life. Because in New Zealand, we can stick our sheep in a paddock and they'll be relatively safe, you know, as long as a dog doesn't get in. But back in those days, it was shepherd versus lion, shepherd versus bear, you know. It was, it was you standing between the, 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 it was the shepherd was the one that was standing between the flock and whatever predator came along. And they did have those predators in those days. So they put themselves in the way. So yeah, the hired hand would take off, you know, like me versus lion, I don't rate my chances, me versus bear, you know, but the, that was the shepherd's job, that's what they did, and they literally put their lives on the line, you know, and David was a shepherd boy um, who later became the king, and, and he talked about how, you know, God is with him, he had his, he had his slings, slingshot and his stones, and that was, that was how he was defend against the lions and the bears, like, good on him, but, you know, I wouldn't want to be me. <laughs> He was rocking right up on his job. What about Psalm 23, guys? Psalm 23 has a bit to say about um, the Lord being our shepherd and some other stuff that we haven't covered yet. Who wants to go there? Psalm 23? Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd, that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pop quiz. But there's no funeral here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, it's the, most, it's the most used in funerals. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually abused in funerals, actually. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the things that deeply concerns me is the number of people who give people hope who uh, have got no, um, got no hope at all. And they, they pump out this, these words as if the words are going to save them. Uh, the interesting thing about that passage in Psalm, Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Or the old words, I will not want, I shall not want. Mm. When he's really the shepherd, we, we won't want. And we won't be wanton when we die. We'll be safe. Yeah. And that's really important for us to remember. Yeah. If, if we're truly walking with the shepherd, which is what we're asked to do, not wandering into the brambles, etc., then at the end of the day, we're going to live a different life. And we won't have any wants. We will be secure. We will be safe. Now, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Yet will I fear no evil. Why? Because of what it said at the beginning of the passage. Yeah. Because the shepherd's there looking after us. That's I right. don't have yeah. to be concerned. I don't have to worry. I don't have to yeah. be uh, wound up about things. I don't have to uh, go, go in such a way that I'm dependent on myself. I, I can walk with the shepherd because the shepherd's called me. And that's, a, I think, Psalm 23. Always when I think of this, um, some of you have seen this happen one or two people in our church have done this, but a friend of ours who many of you have met, Bess, she dances. And the very first time I ever saw this danced, the place was full of a whole lot of people who were, who were not Christians. A whole bunch of people, this is in Kawara. And these toughies who belong to certain gangs, um, which I won't name because I'm not into that, um, but they had tears. They had tears. Because they, the power of what that psalm says hmm. is actually very real. But it's not, you know, the reason they had tears wasn't just because they were touched. It's because they were recognizing they didn't have it. And one of the leaders afterwards, because we did a drug drama that night as well, what the, one of the gang members, a gang, it was a, the leader of the gang, the president of this, one of the two gangs we had in the building. We, we, we got one gang in and then we turned the lights out and put, brought the other gang on the other side of the building, and we set our people between them. And we took a huge risk that night, but it came out, and as, as the president was leaving, and I'd led his brother to the Lord just a few weeks before. Nice. And uh, as he was leaving me, he said to me, you guys really scared the hell out of me. No. I know that's not language I would normally use, 
But my response to him is, I hope it did. Because you know the shepherd, you don't need to know how. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah, it's beautiful. Eh? It's beautiful, Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Yeah. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, so even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yeah. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness will love, oh sorry, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and it's so beautiful that you got a shepherd writing a psalm, but using himself as a sheep. Yeah. Because he knows what the, how good the shepherd is. Yeah. He knows that the shepherd would absolutely make sure that this sheep does not die. Yeah. You know, and will always be safe and will always have his needs met. Um, you know, it's just such a beautiful psalm, man. Sure is. Yeah, yeah, it just goes to show you how good God is, eh? Yeah. Whenever I read Psalm 23, I'm left with the question, who's my shepherd, if I really am honest with myself? And maybe that's a question we can all ask ourselves. Who is our shepherd? Because I think deep down, sometimes we can think we're our own shepherds. We can protect ourselves, we can control a certain amount of things so that we have a, a certain amount of comfort or we have a certain ambition that leads us, drives us, and motivates us. So the reason David says the rest after he says, the Lord is my shepherd, is because, like Gary said, he really was his shepherd. And I often think that sometimes other, other things or people or ambitions or ourselves can slowly become our own shepherds or we can trust in ourselves. But before I was a Christian, I did that, and it failed miserably over and over and over again. And I think, for some stubborn reason, I thought, well, maybe this time it will work, but pfft, not, it didn't. It wasn't until I came here, and I was really touched by, by, by God, and I heard His voice. And how I distinguished His voice from the rest of the voices, from the rest of the, vo rest of the voices, because, man, I had never felt the Holy Spirit before. And that shifted things. Because it went straight into my heart and into my spirit. And that moment, I knew that, there was, that that voice was from heaven. And ever since then, things have been great. Been hard and been difficult. But it leaves the question every now and again, just to make sure that Jesus is our shepherd. Who's ours? <laughs> yeah. I think we're pretty much... Me for when I... <laughs> is, is, has anybody got a question off the floor around the soul shepherd thing? Because it might be something that... We haven't covered that you want to ask about. We can't guarantee you be the answer. You know, no. I think it's interesting that it says in Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because I think sometimes we think, yep, I've signed up with God and it's all going to be okay now, you know? And like Rob just said, you know, when, uh, once I became a Christian and it's been great. And it is great, uh, but it doesn't mean that there, sh there won't be troubles. God hasn't promised that we won't have troubles, what he has promised is to be with us and to be our shepherd and to walk us through it and to give us what we need to get through it yeah. uh, and that we needn't fear in those troubles uh, because his perfect love casts out all fear, you know, what can this life do to us, we can die and then we'll go to heaven, you know, and yeah, yeah. And yeah we can put our focus on looking at the problem the wolves and the lions and the bears in our lives when in actual fact God wants us to, to look at the shepherd because he fights, the, the, he fights for us. He yeah. says that. And sometimes I think we try to do the fighting. Yeah. No? Yeah. And it's cool that he, it says, it also says like, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Yeah. yeah. And even though, you know, life is so full of valleys, eh? We will go through valleys so many times and sometimes we go through valleys that we think we can't handle. Mm. But, you know, um, I reckon that when, when we try to handle things um, and we've, we're struggling to, to sort of get through us because the big that question is who are we looking at? Yeah. You know, who are we looking at? We're, who are we looking to? Are we looking at the situation? Are we looking at the valley? Or are we looking at the one who's with us in the valley? You know, he yeah. says, I will go with you wherever you go. Yeah. And, 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 and I think in another psalm, he says, David says, um, 
You gotta go through trouble. He says, I look to the mountains, where does my help come from? He says, from the maker of heaven and earth. Yeah. The maker of heaven and earth is our helper, is our best friend. Yeah. The one who lays his life down. You know, he says, greater love has no man than this, but to lay down his life for his friend. Amen. And that's, who, that's what he did for us. Yeah. yeah. When I've Why is it different in every other Bible? Oh, no, it's not. There's different translations, Dave. What, what happens, the, the one that um, Shanon read out was just different translation, but saying exactly the same thing. Because it's... Because it was written in Hebrew at the beginning, so they had to turn it into English, and you'll find that when translators translate, they don't always use the same word, because in English especially, there are lots of different words that mean the same thing. So the translator, the Greek word there was one word, but there might be five different words in English that that it translates to. So different translators pick different words like refreshing versus restoring. Or and and one, one of the other issues that pops up is that when somebody's putting out a new, a new Bible, they can't use the words that the other translators used and it, with the same sentence structures because th- th- those other Bibles copyright. Uh, have got copyrighted. And so they can't just literally use what another translator, the work that another translator did. So they have to find a different way of saying the same thing. But as long as it's saying, uh, the, the, the meaning has the same meaning as the original um, um, words in the Greek or the Hebrew, depending if it's Old or New Testament. Yeah. So die. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yet will I fear no evil. But see, for, for, that's good for me at my age, but a lot of younger people don't relate as well to that. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's big. The English language has changed over the years, eh? Yeah. And the, I think the Greek, you know, the text, the, the, Bible, the Greek text and the Hebrew text never changes, so, yeah. And we, we always, you know, coming up with new words all the time. <laughs> yeah. A, a like. good illustration of that is, um, is in, the old, in, in the older translations, you always had Holy Ghost, and nowadays you have Holy Spirit. And the reason for that is, is because the, the English meanings of those two, of the word spirit and ghost, have actually swapped. And so the English language now uses them the opposite way around to what they used to in 1611 when it was, when it was first translated. So there's, there's little things like that. The English, the English language is constantly changing. There's words that we don't even use nowadays. There's other words that are coming in every, every year. There's a whole bunch of new words that are trying to keep up with it. As a minefield for those of us who are older, I think for younger people they adapt more readily. No, the Bible hasn't changed. The message hasn't changed. Hallelujah. It's the same message, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it, because the Greek and the Hebrew, the Bible, the, 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 the original text were in those languages, unchangeable. But the English language changes, so when you translate, you've got to keep up with where the English language is about. It's the same in any language. All languages are in a process of morphing. Yeah. Yeah. What would, your, what would be your way to divide the Good question. Oh, the question was, thanks Robin, the question was, uh, what would be my advice to somebody who's never heard the shepherd, heard his voice? Uh, what would be the advice I'd give for somebody to hear? Well, the first thing is to be open to allow God to speak to me. And say, okay, God, I want to spend some time with you. I want to connect with you. I don't understand anything much. But, but, I, but I want to be able to connect with you. I want to get to know you. When I became a Christian, my experience was of a guy praying for me and his prayer coming true. And, for, you know, and then a couple of days later, his prayer came true. And I said to God, all, all right, God, good enough for you, good enough for me. I didn't hear God's voice literally at that point because... All I knew was that Eric's prayer had been answered and, and God had heard Eric's prayer for me, even though I rubbished him. And, uh, and so, so then I went on this journey and I said, all right, God, good enough for you, good enough for me. And at that point, I started trying to find him and, and I really came to experience him. I came to really know him. And you know the stupid thing about it was some Christians years later when they heard my testimony, I said, you were never born again just because it didn't happen the way that it happened to them. That's ridiculous. Mm, 
it's crazy. We, we need to help people go on a journey and don't expect them to be like us in the yeah. journey because we're all different and God meets us differently. Yeah. And he's a shepherd who meets the needs of each sheep separately, as Shanton pointed out earlier. So, so we'll chase that. Go for it. The question down here. Well, God the Father was, was, um, was God, but he wasn't the shepherd in that way. And, uh, but he was the one with the Son and with the Spirit who planned the whole deal of creating a shepherd for us because we were lost and wandering around. So we needed a shepherd, which is once again what the guys pointed out. So our time's up. Can, can I just go back to Rihanna's question, first question? Yeah. Um, you know, just by looking at this... Um, what are you looking at? Oh, sorry, um, the psalm that we just read, Psalm 23. Um, you know, David, he talks about him being... Him, like, him knowing that he's in safe hands and he's able to be still because he's in God's hands. And I think that... Um, if you want to hear God's voice clearly, you need to be still. And you need to uh, sort of just rest in his hands. Because otherwise we're, we're striving. You know, he says, be still and know that I'm God. Yeah. And he says, stop striving and, and just be still. And um, it's like when we, um, uh, when we receive a, 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 I guess like a, um, I don't know, like what do we, we text these days, right? And we, we get a, a text from our crush or whatever, you know. And what's the first thing we will do, right? We'll, we'll be still. We'll take the time out to read what it says. And it's the same with God. Eh? When, when God speaks, we need, I guess, depending on our state. Well, what I'm trying to say is that you'll hear God best when you're still, you know, when you're still and you're not listening to or striving to, to hear him. But, yeah. I, I think sometimes when we see God's calling us, in the, in, the, in the heavenly text message, we hit delete because we don't want to hear. And we need to read what he's wanting to say. We need to hear what he's wanting to say to us. Amen? Amen. And with that, let's, let's close with prayer.